That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, this is, uh, I, I just cannot stop smiling at this one. This has been by far the most amusing story that happened over the entirety of the weekend. So for those of you who are unaware, I'll give you a quick update. The Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, otherwise known as CHAZ, in Seattle's uh, downtown area, what they've done is they have actually walled off a section of the city walled off a section of the city, and uh, now they are claiming that they are a different country. There was a sign up the other day saying, you are now leaving the United States and entering Chaz. So they've declared themselves apparently an independent nation, and the protesters and Antifa rioters and so on and so forth have created this zone, which ironically has gigantic walls and very tight border security. <laughs> they basically went full Trump, and it has been so amusing to watch this. Uh, they have very strict border enforcement. There's only one way in or out of the Chaz. And to do so, you have to have documentation, which I thought was racist. I thought it was racist to require somebody to provide identification. And it's really funny because they have basically shut down free speech and they say, oh, we're all about free speech. And then you have journalists being attacked inside the Chaz. Uh, there have also been all kinds of issues of violence, uh, police brutality, ironically, because they have a, a quasi police force run by a guy named Raz. Who's a rapper. Yeah. That, that's the guy who you want for your chief of police. Some people are calling him a police chief. Some people are calling him a warlord. So there's just incredible hilarity coming on all over the place. Now, of course it's, it's not funny that people are getting hurt or that journalists are being attacked or any of that stuff. But what is really freaking hilarious is how hard they're trying to create a society out of the six blocks inside Seattle. So let's go ahead and look at this. This was a tweet from one of the people inside the autonomous zone. And there you can see. Okay, so <laughs> the homeless people we invited took away all the food in the Capitol Hill <laughs> autonomous zone. <laughs> oh, and it gets even better. We need more food to keep people, uh, to keep the area operational. Please, if possible, bring vegan meat substitutes. Fruits, oats, soy products, etc. Anything to help us eat. Man. The Babylon Bee can't write comedy that good. That is so far beyond parody. You, you can't come up with anything that's funnier than that. Granted, Babylon B tried, and they, they valiant effort coming up with the Chad zone, which was right next to it. Good job, Babylon B. You did your best. It's not your fault. This is too, real life is, is too funny. Truth is stranger than fiction. The fact that they ran out of food because they were too generous. In other words, you know, the, these people have been yelling at people uh, since the beginning of time that, you know, they're being cruel to the homeless and the homeless are only that way because uh, society keeps them down. And then they invite homeless people in to stay with them and they steal their food. What did you think was going to happen? And it's so funny, they're, they're referred to as the autonomous zone, which, of course, autonomy would suggest that they are self-sufficient, right? Except they're having to beg for food. In fact, they've actually put giant signs out listing all the things that they need to keep running and saying, please help us eat, bring in food from outside. You know, normally when there's a banana Republic or some kind of communist takeover, it takes at least like eight to 10 years for there to be starving people and having to get help from outside in order to feed themselves. These knuckleheads accomplished it in a week. That's got to be a brand new record on communism, starving people out. I, I don't, I don't know how they did it, but in a matter of just seven days, they have already turned into Venezuela. At least it took Venezuela like a decade to get there. Uh, uh, this is my favorite part. This tweet from Matt Walsh with this picture. This is from inside the autonomous zone as well. Oh, that's not right. That's some charts. There we go. So Matt Walsh, the Antifa people in the autonomous zone are taking up farming 
They poured some topsoil onto the grass. <laughs> Seems to have simply placed some plants onto the soil rather than digging holes, expecting to keep the plot sufficiently watered with a watering can. <laughs> it's too good. I can't take it. <laughs> now, granted, I'm an ag major. These guys really are the kids that run away from home. And when they run away from home, they run to the treehouse in their parents' backyard with a cooler full of sandwiches that were made by things that their parents bought for them. That's who these people are. That's the only way I know to describe it. They're angry and they want to show that they're self-sufficient. And then they try to do farming to be autonomous and uh, they just basically pour some miracle crow on top of some grass and then kind of wedge and stick plants down in there. Which, if you look at the size of that plot, that might keep four people fed for a day, you know, a couple of months into the future when the plants actually start flowering and bearing fruit. <laughs> uh, I really think the best lesson that they could learn here and I think that this is something they should actually do. I think that we should have the State Department draw something up, let them be an autonomous nation with one stipulation. Say, you know what? That little section of Seattle, that's no longer part of the United States jurisdiction. It's, it's a little country within a city like the Vatican or something like that. You're going to be your own autonomous nation, but uh, no welfare from us. You're not getting any of our supplies. And the stipulation, the one condition that we will add is you have to allow us to monitor it. In other words, just let us have some cameras within the zone. Let us have access to those. Because that would keep people entertained for months. Not a lot of movies going on right now. A lot of people are having to stay home. At least give us the reality show of what happens within the Chaz. That would keep me entertained. Just these couple of days, in my opinion, this has got to be the funniest story of the year. So let's go ahead and at least get some entertainment out of all this madness. And one other thing that I wanted to bring up on all this, they actually have issued a list of demands, which is, this one's less funny, but it certainly is indicative of who they really are. So this is people within the Chaz, and, and according to them, the collective black voices that are making these demands. Issue number one, the Seattle Police Department and attached court system are beyond reform. We do not request reform. We demand abolition. We demand the Seattle Council and the mayor def uh, defund and abolish the Seattle Police Department and the attached criminal justice apparatus. This is uh, this means 100 percent of funding, including existing pensions for the Seattle police and an equal level of priority we also demand that the city disallow the operations of ICE, you know, inter, uh, the Customs Enforcement Agency, the ones that handle things like deporting people in the city of Seattle. Issue number two, in the transitary period between now and the dismantlement of the Seattle Police Department, we demand that the use of armed force be banned entirely. No guns, no batons, no riot shields, no chemical weapons, especially those against exercising their First Amendment rights as Americans to protest. So when CNN and people on the left try to explain to you, OK, well, defund the police doesn't mean like actually get rid of all the police. It just means uh, some reform or maybe cut funding and spend things in other places. Yeah, that's not what they're talking about. That's absolutely not what they're talking about. You can see it in the list of demands that they wrote. They mean, in their own words, 100% of funding. That they are beyond reform, and we want the abolishment of the Seattle Police Department, including existing pensions. So even somebody that was a police officer 20 years ago, that hasn't even been in the force, that guy, he's got to go too. No funding for that whatsoever. I mean, these people are living in crazy town and now they're literally living in crazy town. Uh, but anyway, they go on to say, number three, we demand to end school to prison pipeline and the abolition of youth jails, get kids out of prison, get cops out of schools. We also demand the new youth prison be built in Seattle, currently be repurposed. 
And then a little bit later in number eight, which actually ironically somewhat contradicts the one that they just made, we demand decriminalization of acts of protest, amnesty for protesters generally, but specifically those involved in what has been termed the George Floyd Rebellion against terrorist cell that previously occupied this area known as the, Palato the Seattle Police Department. So now the police are terrorists, according to them. This includes the immediate release of all protesters currently being held in prison. So no more prisons. So when you call these people anarchists and people on the left go, no, they're not anarchists. They're just trying to demonstrate. They want their voices to be heard. Uh, no, they're calling for full-on anarchy. No police, no imprisonments. Everybody just kind of walks around, and if they commit a crime, there's not really any repercussions for it. Then they go on to say further down, we demand the city of Seattle and the state government release any prisoner currently serving time for marijuana-related offense and expunge the related conviction. So in other words, if uh, you killed a guy and took his marijuana stash and the police caught you later with possession for marijuana and tried you and convicted you for possession and murder, well then not only should you be let out of prison, but you should also have the charge of murder that you were convicted for expunged as well. That's what this is saying. So the idea that, oh no, we're only talking about nonviolent criminals... Uh, not according to this. And then finally, there's a lot more to this, but I'll just read the, the last point that we're going to look at. The demand of the abolition of imprisonment, generally speaking, but especially the abolition of both youth prisons and privately owned for-profit prisons. So basically no imprisonment whatsoever. Just anybody that breaks the law, just turn them right back out into the population. I mean, these people are psychopaths. And they want you to believe that they're just a bunch of uh, peaceful moderates. I'm sorry, there, there's just no truth to that. But I really do think that what this ultimately leads to, and, and the ultimate message here, is that you cannot allow anarchy to take place. Because this is a good view into what happens when a bunch of people running the show do not believe in law and order when they do not believe in punishing the guilty, even if they are convicted, even if they do wrong things, you get anarchy. You get people just roaming the streets that do bad things with no repercussions and then get to continue to do bad things, continue to harm other individuals. This comes alongside with different reports of things like assault, rape. I mean, it's kind of hard to have a Me Too movement and be a feminist when you believe that people should be able to rape and because they've abolished all the prisons, that that person just gets to go free afterward. I mean, maybe there's a different legal penalty, but it certainly is an imprisonment. And so if he rapes one woman one night and then he gets to go free and then can walk out and rape another woman the next night, just keep stacking up those charges. This is the kind of imbecilic nonsense that children live in. A child believes that you can just turn everybody out, leave them to their own devices, no law enforcement whatsoever. Keep in mind, I'm a libertarian. I think that pretty much everything that can be allowed without hurting another individual should be. But that comes with the stipulation that once you infringe upon another person's rights, there has to be consequences for that. These people don't. That's an anarchist. That's a person that doesn't believe in laws. And that's where they are. They are going to reap what they sow. They're not very good at sowing. We saw that from Matt Walsh's tweet. But whatever they, they sow, they are going to eventually reap. This is the kind of society that the left wants to live in. They don't realize that there are all these unintended consequences, but they want to you know, get rid of prisons. Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, an actually duly elected member of Congress, advocated for the abolishment of prisons. These are the same people. The only difference is these people actually went out and do it. did it. The other Democrats are trying to work within the system to bring this about. But if you implemented this nationwide, it's going to be the same thing. Gang, we are seeing here a microcosm of what the left's agenda will bring us. Don't let people forget it. We're getting a rare window into basically an experiment 
of what would happen if we let all of the left's policies become reality, this is it. You're seeing it play out in real time. It should be a pretty stern warning for us. My mother always said if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid, but seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.